from PRX. Friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's time for the podcaster who is here uh, to uh, keep you company, take your mind off of stuff. I'm here because you deserve a good night's sleep. I'm here to, 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 to just be your friend in the deep, dark night, to talk to you, but you don't need to listen to me, which is a bit different of a proposition. So maybe just see how it goes. I'm going to explain a couple things, but I'm so glad you're here because I've been there. Or, or I, I've been there multiple times. Uh, tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep. And that's why I want to help. I also want to help. And there's a lot of other people listening right now that are nodding because you deserve a good night's sleep. Hopefully they're nodding off. I didn't even realize that pun. I was more meant they're nodding their head like, yeah, you deserve a good night's sleep. We've been there too. We know what it's like where things feel, you know, that you're not looking forward to bedtime, that you dread it. And we want your life to be more manageable. If you're getting the sleep you need and you deserve, your life's going to be better. So I hope this show can provide it. Uh, just give it a few try, see how it goes. Most people do not like the show in the first, great news that I'll tell you in the first two minutes. No, most people don't like the show when they listen to it the first time. So if that's your reaction right now, it's pretty normal. Uh, give it a few tries to see how it goes. That's what a lot of people have said uh, on reviews and emails and people, a lot of people that support the show that pay for the podcast say, at first I did not like you at all. Uh, and they don't say it, like they, usually they say it laughing, but with they, their language is stronger too. Because it's another thing we share, right? Uh, it was, we're skeptical, we're doubtful, we're irritable. Because you, if you're not getting the sleep you need, of course you're going to be like that. But also just see how the show goes. It might not fit you. If for some reason you're already reacting to me in a strong way, you're like, no, I can't listen to another second. Sleepwithmepodcast.com slash no thank you. Has a bunch of different other stuff you could listen to. Sleep podcasts and sleepy stuff. So try that. Because you still deserve a good night's sleep. Uh, but so what we got coming up here, we'll have some support th for the show. That's how it comes out twice a week for free with a team of people it takes, some, it takes to put the show out. Then there'll be a long meandering intro. That's a show within a show kind of meant to ease you into bedtime and uh, to take your mind off of stuff. And then uh, we'll talk about the Great British Bake Off. So that's what we got coming up. Uh, that's the structure of the show. That's why I make the show. I'm so glad you're here. And here's a couple of ways we're able to do it for you for free twice a week. All right, everybody, it's Scooter here. It's time uh, to talk about Sleep With Me Plus, but more to talk about Sleep With Me. Like, you know, Sleep With Me, why does it even exist, right? Because I had found that most sleep audio that was out there, it didn't work for me. And a lot of it made me feel worse, right? Because it reminded me of how it feels in the deep, dark night. And that's where the idea of Sleep With Me came from, was uh, being lonely in the deep, dark night, needing something to take my mind off of what was keeping me awake. Because I was desperate to sleep, but I was more desperate for all the rigmarole around not being able to sleep to stop. And that's why Sleep With Me exists, because I was like, man, doesn't it, does anybody else in the world want something like this? A friend in the deep, dark night to tell them stories, make them giggle, keep them company so they could fall asleep. And you probably heard me talk about Sleep With Me Plus and supporting the show. Like, why does Sleep With Me need support? We're 100% reliant on uh, listener action to support the show, whether it's supporting the sponsors or supporting the podcast directly. There's no outside funding for Sleep With Me. And at this point, it takes over 120 hours a week to make uh, two episodes of Sleep With Me and put them out and, and keep in touch and do all the stuff to keep the show going, which is it ends up being over 500 hours a month. And in the past, to, you know, I used to do as much of that work uh, as I could myself or cut where I could. And, uh, you know, over the years, we have had the support to slowly delegate. And all that means the sport so show is more sustainable. Like when I was doing it all myself, it just wasn't sustainable. And I think most of the people that rely on Sleep With Me on a regular basis, you want the podcast to be around when, when you need it, right? Uh, you want it to be there, whether you listen twice a week or you listen to 10 episodes a night, you count on the show. And the show counts 
on you, right? And so if you support the show on Sleep With Me Plus, what do you get? Well, you get uh, to listen the way you want to listen. You know, we've learned over the years, like uh, some people like stories, some people like intros, some people like certain styles of episodes, some people like bonus exclusive content. And Sleep With Me Plus is able to offer all that in a way that's easy to find stuff, easy to use. So if any of that sounds appealing to you, you could sign up at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash plus. That's uh, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash plus. And you can try out a seven day free trial if you want, you know, get everything set up and then see what you think. Uh, thanks so much. All right, everybody. It's time to talk about tonight's sponsor, Helix Sleep. Do yourself a favor, go to helixsleep.com slash sleep and take that Helix quiz. That was about four years ago that I took the Helix quiz, got matched with the Helix Dusk Lux, which is a perfect mattress for me and the way I sleep. Because the thing is, the Helix lineup offers 20 unique mattresses, including the award-winning Lux collection, the newly released Helix Elite collection. They have a mattress designed for big and tall sleepers, even a mattress made just for kids. And how would you know which one is going to fit you and your body? You just take that Helix sleep quiz. You find the perfect mattress in under two minutes. That personalized mattress is shipped straight to your door free of charge. And Helix knows there's no better way to test out a new mattress than by sleeping on it in your own home. That's why they offer a 100-night trial and a 10- to 15-year warranty to try out your new mattress. And here's the thing. Everybody's unique. Everybody sleeps differently. And that is why Helix has uh, several different mattress models to choose from. Each design for specific sleep positions and feel preferences. You know, if you're like me, I sleep on my stomach and my side. I sleep a hot, so I want to stay cool. And that's what happened. I took the quiz. I got matched with the Helix Dusk Lux. I love my Helix Dusk Lux. And the way I know is every time I leave town, I cannot wait to get back. That first night back in my Helix Dusk Lux, it's like I'm in a state of sleep bliss. Not only is it the best mattress I've slept on, but set up is fast and easy. Helix mattresses are delivered in a box, a straight to your door for free. And Helix is offering 20% off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. Go to helixsleep.com slash sleep and use the code helixpartner20. This is their best offer yet. It won't last long. With Helix, better sleep starts now. All right, everybody, Scoots here. It's time for the Sleepy Supporter Zone. The one part of the podcast I need you here is where I pop my peas. If you please, I thank the listeners who supported the sponsors. Yeah, this part of the podcast is a little bit higher energy uh, than the rest of the show, because these are the people who keep the show free for everybody. I'm, I would love to be saying your name here. If you support a sponsor, let them know about it. Let me know about it. So I could thank you here on the Sleepy Supporter Zone. We haven't heard from anybody in a little while, but I wanted to thank some people who took the time to support the show and to write up some testimonials about why they support the show on Sleep With Me Plus. And uh, I want to thank Sharon, who said, yeah, I, you know, I can afford to support the show. It helps it calm my mind enough to sleep. So there's so much I appreciate about the show. And Sharon said, if you're thinking about supporting the show, remember, it feels so good to support the podcast. And supporting artists, uh, even bore artists, is crucial to them being around. Thank you, Sharon, for supporting the show. If you want to be like Sharon, hear your name on the Sleepy Supporter Zone, support a sponsor, let them know about it, let me know about it. Fill out the form at sleepingmepodcast.com slash sponsors or support the show directly and we'll send you a testimonial uh, to ask your opinion. Thank you so much, Sharon. The second part of the Sleepy Supporter Zone is you getting the support you need right now. Uh, if you're having a tough time, there's links to resources in our show notes, including international resources you could connect with right now. It's also about being a part of positive change with our actions, uh, not just saying Black Lives Matter, not just saying support Ukraine, not just saying stop AAPI hate, not just saying all these things, but taking action, learning more. There's there's links to resources we could do that in the show notes and you could join us uh, uh the things we're supporting right now sleep with me directly me personally is the midnight mission in los angeles it's a shelter uh that's there to help people experiencing homelessness we're supporting the trevor project yeah, you can support the Sharp Trevor Project uh, directly as well. And we're supporting Hand in Hand. You know, I first heard about Hand in Hand from RGB. 
and I've been supporting it. And right now is an important time to support an organization looking to move forward. Hand in Hand is Israel's fastest growing integrated social movement. Their work reaches thousands of people every day, proving we can live together as Jews and Arabs, Israelis and Palestinians. And while there's a lot of different ways to support whatever's hurting your heart right now, Hand in Hand is one of those. And that's the one we've been supporting. And you could learn more uh, about the Midnight Mission, Hand in Hand, or the Trevor Project and support any of those organizations or support whatever works for you. Uh, but you can see those links right in our show notes. Oh, Mystery Bard, a lot of people help out in the show. Who are they? Chris Posty Poster Song. Sounds like an earful. Wrote the theme song. Edits episodes. Too. Carl W. The Lecture. Also edits episodes. Ashley, Kenny, Scotty, Jennifer. Runner, 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 runner. Eric and the team let us down. They're on the website. I am the Mystery Bard. I do the lullabies, yeah. I do commissions at Jonathan Mandart. You see the kindness shine straight on through When the listeners form their own Facebook group Keith, Stacy, Sarah, Julie, and Jennifer These are your moderators Get support, dear Scooter, on Patreon Buy the merch and support the sponsors You can find anything you want At sleepwithmepodcast.com And we're so proud Thanks, Mystery Bard. Don't forget, uh, if you want a free way, you say, well, I, I love the ad supported show, Scoots, but I prefer something without the supporter zone or without that stuff. If you can't afford to support the show directly, you could sign up for our referral program for free, refer people to the free podcast and get access to ad-free episodes and story-only episodes. That's at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash R-E-F-E-R. That's refer. Sleepwithmepodcast.com slash refer. What do you say? We slow it down and get on with the show. I hate you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble, getting to sleep, trouble, staying asleep. Well, welcome. This is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do it with a bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed, turn out the lights and press play. I'm going to do the rest. What I'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place where you could set aside whatever's keeping you awake. It could be thoughts you're thinking about, like thoughts about the past, the present, the future. Thinking, you know, thinking thoughts you're thinking. Think, think, thought. You know, I say that all the time. Uh, like, but things on your mind uh, that are coming up, uh, they feel like, here, here's the, my thoughts. Uh, is Has there ever been something about the velocity of thoughts? Uh, that sounds very... Studious, the velocity, the velocity of my thoughts could be another chapter in another imaginary autobiography I've never written. The velocity of my thoughts. Uh, it was a, it was a cool, uh, a brisk. You're right, correct. It was a, it was a morning I couldn't define. Was it brisk? Was it cool? Was it cold? Was it frigid? But yet I was inside my bed, yet I was not asleep. And yet, yet, it like, in a, like, uh, and that's when I noticed the velocity of my thoughts increasing. Like a deer in the snow. After the crack of a branch. Oh my gosh, I'm just, what, what, I think I just went into a fugue, imaginary autobiography, fugue state there. Sorry about that. I'm not sure exactly what it, those might have been the best, uh, Pros of that, that's ever come out of me, even though yeah, like, uh, but that that happens on this podcast. So it could be thoughts uh, at, at varying, vo- but then it occurred to me yet again that it was night, and the varying velocity of my thoughts, verily, 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 life was not a dream. Okay, so sorry, I got in, refugued. Uh, let me do, do some def. Do, does anybody have a defuger handy? Does anybody have a definition of fugue? Just so I could uh, make sure. Oh, is it? A, do I defuger or do I unfugue? There's another brand of merch. I mean, to go off topic yet again, underfu- underfugues. 
They're what you wear under your, when you're in a fugue state, make sure you're wearing under fugues. Uh, any similarity to underoos is purely unintentional. Uh, also, if you don't know what underoos were, uh, probably don't, I mean, like now it's something, believe it or not, like underwear used to be super plain. Uh, I don't know if this is part of my autobiography. It's just a tangent. And that's why we're putting out under fugues. Uh, but so, but uh, just to complete the tangent for people that are, there used to be a brand of underwear for when I was a kid, for kids called underoos. That I guess, I don't know if there was, this is not meant to be totally funny, but it is kind of funny. It's like, was there a place, was there like a marketer that was like, you know what I heard? These kids aren't wearing underwear anymore. They say it's, it's a, uh, this is a great, this is a, uh, whatever they call it, a unique selling opportunity. And they said, what do you mean? Say the kids, the underwear is so boring. I don't know about you, about you, but you know, adults, we can put up with it. We found that we can make our lives tolerable and we've, you know, whatever, we got to go to work. Uh, but these kids, uh, we need to find a way. Uh, to, you know, to, to get them to buy, like we, we could like, so there wasn't print underwear, I guess that was a long version of saying for anybody, but they decided for kids, they would do it. So it'd be like, uh, DC comics, Marvel comics, um, stuff like that. I don't know how, like, uh, and, uh, but now it's kind of a common thing. So you might not be able to we'd say, what was the big deal about underoos? And I said, I don't know. I don't know if, I mean, I like, uh, I would say that underwear was generally boring, but also I don't know that there was a state where kids were running around like, like, like fully closed, obviously. But then you say, well, you're not fully closed unless you're in, uh, what do we call them? Under fugues. Uh, and you're in a fugue state. You're not fugu fully, fugally, clo fug am I fugally clothed? Uh, if I'm in a f clothed in a few, I mean, I'm usually clothed in a fugue state anyway. So am I fugally clothed? Uh, well, I, I feel fugally clothed when I'm in my fugue, under fugues. Under fugues might be a good name for somebody too, or just, uh, it, I don't know if it's a good fake last name. I already have too many of those. Miss reminds me of Mr. Underhill from uh, Fletch, which we were reminded of in um, Ted Lasso. Mr. Underfugue, he could be somebody's boss. Uh, and you say, well, anyway, holy cow, I'm supposed to introduce a sleep podcast, right? As thoughts. So that's one thing that could be keeping you awake. It could be feelings, anything coming up for you emotionally, uh, whether it's uh, feelings from the past, the present, or the future. It could be physical sensations, changes in time, temperature, routine. Uh, whatever it is, uh, it could be anything. And the reason I go through that stuff is just so you feel less alone. There's someone listening right now that can relate to how you feel. And there's probably someone that's gone through something similar to whatever's keeping you awake. And I know this is a digital medium and that's kind of a strange thing to say, but it is, it is lonely in the deep, dark night. And even if I can't relate to what you're going through, I mean, I'm, I think I can relate to how it feels, but even if I can't, there's someone listening right now who can relate. So I just want you to know that because it's important. And that's why I make the show. What I'll do is I'll send my voice across the deep, dark enemies, lulling, soothing, creaky, dulcet tones, pointless meanders, and superfluous tangents, which we've already had a bunch of. I think, I don't even remember how it started, but I was writing some sort of, I don't know, I was writing some sort of poetic uh, thing about the weather. I, like, I don't even remember the, the, like the writing prompt. It was something about, and then I realized I was in a fugue state. Then I came up with an invention, not really a, a utilizable invention, but, you know, maybe, I don't, maybe out, maybe somewhere out there, as Fievel says, there's a, uh, there's a few, if like that could be, that could again, if when there's a fuger in need, I'm a fuger's friend indeed. Under fugues, uh, more than just an undergarment. They're a way of life. Under fugues. Uh, owned by Mr. Underfugue Enterprises LLC. Uh, um, okay, so pointless meanders, they just like, <laughs> they're just flowing tonight. 
Uh, they don't flow very fast. Uh, yeah, I guess they're more, what is that called? Like a tree, trickle, like a, yeah, you know what I mean. And they're not, uh, <laughs> sometimes things just deteriorate. Whatever syrup does. Uh, so, okay, what else, what else do you need to know? Semi voice, oh, structure the show. Oh, first, I said this earlier, but at first, people don't like the show. That's normal. Because you probably tried a bunch of this different stuff to fall asleep. Maybe somebody recommended this. Maybe you found it during a search. And you're trying to get to sleep. But trust me, to give this show a few tries and just see how it goes, you got really nothing to lose. The show's free. And maybe, like, you take me up on the off for a sleep with me podcast.com slash no thank you. You find another sleep podcast or this one works for you. So see how it goes. It's, the reason it's different is kind of twofold. One is this podcast, you don't really listen to it. You could listen to it. But it's kind of just barely listenable. And what I mean by that is like some people listen to me at a mumble or across a room. Some people are listening and barely paying attention. And some people are just listening to get their mind off of stuff. It could be during the day or at night. And then they fall asleep, or at least it makes them feel less alone. That's why people listen during breaks during the day when they're having a stressful day. But also people that can't fall asleep, because this show isn't here to put you to sleep. It's here to keep you company while you fall asleep, or that ideally you just find yourself awake later tomorrow. And you say, oh yeah, I fell asleep. I think he was talking about like a defuger. He was trying to want, like if you unfugue or defugue. And every time he did, he refugued. Uh, he was in a state of fugue, fugue, fugue you know, confug, confugin, confug, confug, yeah. Couldn't say it because it's too much like confusion, which are probably related. Again, I don't have, uh, my, you know, my mind's got, my mind's made for meanders, not definitions. Okay, so, oh, this is a podcast. It doesn't put you to sleep. I'm here to be your boar friend, your boar bae, your boar sib, your boar cuz, your boar bestie, your neighbor, your boar burr, your boar bud. Your friend, there's people that listen who can't sleep. That's why the shows are over an hour. So there's no pressure to fall asleep. I'll be here to keep you company to the very end, whether you're listening, whether you're awake or asleep. So those are two things about the show. The other things about the show... Uh, I thought there was three things. Oh, yeah, you deserve a good night's sleep. I've only done this like 1,200 times. Uh, you've, uh, you deserve a good night's sleep. You deserve a, 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 a bedtime you could look forward to or feel neutral about. No pressure to fall asleep. No pressure to listen. Structure the show. The show is structured in a very deliberate way to benefit the most people it can and to be flexible that you can kind of adjust to show how it works for you if you become a regular listener. So let me tell you the intention behind the different parts of the structure of the show. The greeting, friends beyond the binary, ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, then I say something else. Is so you feel seen and welcomed in because it, it, like you say, oh, the light's on there. It seems warm or cool or whatever temperature I'm looking for. And maybe I could approach that show and, and check it out. I don't know. I'll see. And that's all you need to do to come here. You say, huh, I kind of, I'll see how it goes. So that's what the greeting's for. Uh, then there's support so the show can be free and come out twice a week. And to make the show sound free and easy, I realize it sounds like this is all me just sitting down naturally and it just comes right out and then it just comes right to the air. But it is, does take a, like, a lot of different people working really hard. And we want the show to be free for everybody. So that's how we do it as the sponsors and the people that support the show. Then there's an intro, which is a show within a show. But when people don't like the support for some reason, they lump the intro in with it. And I don't want you to miss out on the intro at first because it is another very deliberate, thought out part of the show. I mean, if I, I mean, I wouldn't make a, I guess if it's like a conundrum, right? Uh, if I made a short intro, this wouldn't be, wouldn't work as a sleep podcast. But I would like because I can make a long reandering intro, it helps me make a sleep podcast. So I don't know, like maybe there's like a, where my natural stuff and the, the structure of the show overlap because the intro is meant to ease you into bedtime. There is a percentage of people that skip the intro, there's a percentage of people that fall asleep during the intro. 
there's a larger percentage of both of those of people that listen to intro after intro after intro. But for most people, the intro is part of their wind down routine, the kind of twilight or the buffer between your evening and sleep. So they're using like a lot of people and you could try it this way. Use it as you are winding down or getting ready for bed. And maybe as you develop a bedtime routine, you could do some other chill activity uh, while you're ready for it. This isn't what you need to do or should, but like what I do is I pet my dog for a little while. I foam roll. I write out like some stuff that happened during the day. That's just one part of my wind down routine, reading a book. I don't know if you, I could read a book and listen to this podcast at the same time, but you could play it afterwards or whatever, but you could do some doodling or whatever, or you could be in bed getting comfortable. So just see how it goes. Uh, but that's why the intro goes on and on and on for tw- 12 to 25 minutes. Uh, it introduces the podcast, but it also kind of, it, yeah, it's just like a landing strip. Then there's support for the show. Then there's our uh, bedtime story tonight. It'll be based on an episode of Great British Bake Off. And we'll cover that. And, you know, I'll be going off topic and wondering about meringue or whatever it is. And you see, you don't know your, your meringue from your... Some, lem, you don't know the difference between lemon jam and lemon meringue and lemon meringue pie. And just general lemon meringues. And I'd say, well, I, I, yes, and if you could provide me with all those in a uh, delectable way, I'd be more than happy to to try those and then forget, then still be we back where we started. So, what is that? What was I saying? I don't know. But so, oh, this, I don't know. I got mixed up. Somehow, now I've got lemon meringue. Oh, we're going to talk about Great British Bake Off. And then there'll be thank yous at the end. So this is structure of the show. It's why I make the show. I'm so glad you're here, whether you're new or you're a regular listener. I hope you feel at home here. Uh, and, and I hope you know there's other people that want you to feel at home here, other listeners. But you don't need to, the The thing about the show is you don't need to either. Like if it doesn't work for you, we still want you to feel at home somewhere, right? So I'm glad you're here. I work really hard at your next drive, and I really hope I can help you fall asleep. So thanks again for coming by. And here's a couple of ways we're able to do it for you for free twice a week. All right, buddy, it's Scoots here. I'm talking about Sleep With Me Plus. If you haven't checked out a trial, you know, there's a seven-day trial at all levels at Sleep With Me Plus. You go to sleepwithmepodcast.com slash plus, sign up, you know, cancel in six days uh, before your trial renews. But I want to talk about an uh, email I get uh, somewhat often. It kind of goes like a little bit like this, so maybe you can relate to this email. You know, Scoots, I love this podcast. I've been listening to it for years. It has changed my life. It has changed how I sleep. I know most people love listening to this ad-supported version. They listen linearly and they wind down during the intro. They fall asleep during the story. But Scoots, I'm different. I love the show, man. But the thing is, I I listen all night long and, you know, just transitions between the shows and the ads or, oh, man, like with Supporter Zone, I fall asleep early during the intro. And then I hear the Supporter Zone or the the sponsors between the story or I'm a musician. So hearing the Mystery Bard sing and I want you to know, yeah, I see you. You love the podcast. It's had this powerful impact. I'm putting you to sleep. You consider that priceless, right? That's what we designed Sleep With Me Plus for, for all those people, people that listen all night, people that just want the intros, people that just want the stories, musicians who don't want any music, they get that story only feed, people that don't want to hear the supporter zone, they don't want to hear the ads, they don't want to hear the thank yous at the end. You just want one specific show, a lot of it, whether it's Bake Off or TNG or the store, certain stories, you want exclusive content. All those people are a little bit different and that's what we finally have been able to offer with Sleep With Me plus is for those of you that say, I love this show, but I could, I, could, I could use a little bit more of this or a little bit less of this. So get over there. Sleep With Me Plus was made for you. We've been waiting 10 years to be able to do this for you. So you could sign up and again, test it out first. Uh, it works in almost every podcast app, even on Spotify. And you could sign up at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash plus, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash plus and check it out. Thanks. All right, everybody, Scoose here. We're talking episode six, Desserts Week. I don't know if they ever said, get your just desserts. And I only just realized now that there's a, there used to be a dessert place called Just Desserts.
Uh, I don't know if I ever went to one, but as far as I know, they, you know, the, the, the thing was you, you, they just served the desserts, like, right, just the desserts. I don't know if it was a cafe or a takeout place. But I didn't realize there was that extra pun of like, whatever you're getting, you're just desserts. Or maybe that's not a pun, which is interesting because I just realized, uh, <laughs> I think I've said pun and interesting five times. But it, because this episode opens with uh, a sequence about uh, movie Lawrence of Arabia and uh, like Noel uh, coming out of the desert. Uh, because he doesn't, he has it mixed up, whether it's desserts or desserts. We'll look it up here. I just started playing it. Uh, uh, let's see. There's uh, something about a camel, a trailer, uh, but Sa- Sandy and Paul, you know, Sandy's like, no, it's desserts, not desert. Uh, it's not desert week. Uh, yeah, he's doing a, it's like a sepia tone stroll. His hands are behind his back. There's. I've never seen Lawrence of Arabia, so I'm not positive that's what it's from. But I think that's what they alluded to. His head's back. Uh, very dramatic. Oh, now we got a close-up of wheat berries. I think those are wheat berries. And they said, Sandy, you're going to love me. I've nailed the theme this week. Lawrence of Arabia, the Great Arabian Desert. Yeah, but Sandy says it's actually dessert week, uh, not desert week. Oh, my costume's ruined. Well, we'll do a nativity play. Welcome to the Great British Baking Show. So the, these sequences they had to do after for the U.S. version only, there was a stuffed camel. And Sandy this week has the um, bullhorn that uh, Paul had last week for the open, maybe? Or did they do, do, do they, have they always done those sequences? Did they do them twice for the Great British Bake Off and the Great British Baking Show? These are answers to questions I don't have answers to. <laughs> There was, and then there was, so we just had the opening teaser sec, sec, section, stress and gin. Uh, then we see a bird and Priya's uh, glad for week six. Michael's a little bit, it says it's weird. Kind of like uh, going off one by one, kind of like an Agatha Christie. David is not a dessert person uh, and neither is Rosie. I don't make desserty things. No, no. Well, hello, bakers. Back to dessert week. Signature challenge, layered meringue cake. Uh, cake with meringue layers. Uh, let's not get too technical here. Large cake you share with friends. Minimum of three layers. Sandwich with filling. Two hours and 45 minutes. On your market set bake. I forgot to research Noel's shirt, but it's very... Uh, Kind of like a 60s style uh, art, uh, I mean, uh, but I don't know what I'm talking about, but uh, 420 style art. Okay, so everybody's starting to make their mixes. Paul's talking about uh, uh, like a nice uh, definition, peaks, shape of your meringue. Wow, I want to eat that uh, when you see it. It could be simple. But you better it better be about the flavor, Peru says. But don't over keep it simple, but make it good, but don't overcomplicate it. So we got David up first. Uh, David is doing a mixed spice uh, meringue, each layer different spice, one clove, one star anise, and one cinnamon. And Paul's like, do those go together? And David's like, uh, what? Uh, I think they do. Somebody else says, why would you even ask that? There's figs, there's berries, vanilla cream. Have any of your friends had it, David? Uh, no, just practiced on myself, uh, but I like these flavors. Noel says he's shooting for his moon, shooting for the moon, man. I admire the bravery. Uh, Henry's worried about the meringue. Uh, he's doing some uh, a coastal town in France full of lo- lovely patisseries. Pistachio chocolate meal version. A towering meringue cake, uh, four layers, uh, uh, creme pati- chocolate creme patissier, raspberry jam, and pistachio meringue. And uh, oh, say, Henry goes, yeah, you got to lunge between the benches now because there's so few people. Two lunges and you get to the final. You're going to measure by a lunge, Henry, huh? Henry's very quirky. I like him. I like all these uh, contestants. People are baking nuts. Most people are flavoring the meringue with nuts. Uh, life in a nutshell. Michael's making a lot of different uh, nut-related puns. 
Rosie's up next. Uh, salted caramel French meringue. Raspberry and lime curd. So no nuts in hers. Chocolate ganache. Fruit and chocolate. Tartness of the curd. Uh, layers of lime and raspberry. Uh, salted caramel. And chocolate ganache. Uh, and how confident are you feeling? Well, last week I took a hit to my confidence, and you thought you were going home. I was certain. I didn't think there was any way I wasn't, uh, but I want to prove my place here. Good luck, Rosie. Thank you very much. Alice is shaving chocolate uh, and saying it's like going to the gym. She's also going nut-free. Black Forest Gatto. Uh, nut-free. True Black Forest. Uh, Black, Black Forest homage, uh, chocolate meringue, chocolate mousse, cherry compotes. And she's using sweet cherries. They got some zing. Okay, well, that should work. Uh, should work beautifully. Well, good luck, Alice. Uh, good luck. Uh, Steph's up. Uh, timeless classic meringue treatment is uh, Eton Elegance. Eton Mess, which I looked up at one point what Eton Mess was. I already forgot, but... Uh, Pistachios, raspberries, white chocolate are the main flavors. Pistachio rich meringue is an Eton Mess upgrade filled with raspberries, white chocolate, cream cheese, pistachio spikes. And Noah gives her a hard time twice in a row. Star Baker, please don't. Uh, it's like a pending doom. And he says, I could relate. Uh, you know, I got hired. Like, hired. It's like, uh, I don't blame you for these feelings. Priya's getting ready to pipe some stuff. So is David. Piping meringue. So this is a piping meringue sequence. Some people are doing circles or discs, as they say. Henry's doing a rectangle. They're going in an hour. You got to cook at low temperature, 130. Drying it out over time, David says. Uh, marshmallowy, but uh, chew, I don't know. And then you start to work on your fillings. All important fillings. Uh, chocolate orange at the bottom of the uh, stockings. So that's what Michael's is based on. Uh, so it's dark chocolate, meringue cake, cr orange crema bear, uh, hazelnut spikes, uh, dark, dark chocolate and orange ganache on the outside. Uh, there's booze in the ganache as well. A little orange liqueur. Prue's going to love it. Uh, Noel says, uh, and they say good luck. Uh, Priya's reaching for the bottle this time. Uh, Amaretto Creme Pat. Uh, she doesn't drink, but her husband's favorite drink is uh, husband Sean's tipple of choice is uh, whatever I said with a blueberry crema bear. Paul says, you're usually spot on with your flavors, but your timing is what needs help. Uh, she says, I know. So I'm going to buy you what she goes. I got a watch in my drawer here. Uh, one hour left. Steph uh, is feeling sick because uh, everybody's checking their prog cook baking progress. Massive meringues, uh, bulbous, uh, or Henry's. Uh, and then you got to let your oven cool down. Can't leave the meringues in there. You can't. Go, you don't want them to crack. Uh, Henry's getting ready to do some whatever, uh, whatever that's called with it. melting a chocolate. People are working on their designs, a lot of shaking and trembling. A blowtorch circles of chocolate, tempering the chocolate. Not sure if it's working. Michael says, uh, chocolate with a temper, even tempered, dark chocolate, uh, or is it furious? Uh, there you go. Uh, baking show and rosie says what is going on my ganache is grainy not awful but grainy not what i want 30 minutes left i don't know i'll have to make it again rosie's gonna make hers again people are trying to take the meringues out henry takes his over flips over gets on his knees uh, in order to get his uh in the right place also, he's wearing uh, Helene, one of Helena's pins, I believe, that she must have given him. And putting cherries on the ghetto. Henry says his is looking voluptuous, his uh, meringue. Blue food is weird, uh, uh, Priya says. Hers is an interesting color. 
And then they're trying to put them together. Baked meringue is incredibly fragile. Got to be delicate. Stacking it, oh dear. And then weighing it down with filling. You don't want it to break. And so people are getting a little like, uh, Henry says, if this works, I may strip. And it fits actual miracle. Ten minutes left. We get a close-up of Nolan Sandy. They go in for a better close-up. And, uh, yeah, I may not get this done. Uh, decorating raspberry and lime curd last minute. Uh, we bit messy. Aren't we all a little messy sometimes? Uh, but it's coming together. Remade the ganache, but didn't cover it on all the sides. Made place space between the layers, chocolate and orange ganache. And one minute, uh, or is it three hours, Noel says. Uh, everybody's trying to put the finishing touches, shaking hands, uh, assembly, Prius dancing, sprinkling of uh, powdered sugar, and time is up. And everybody crosses their arms. Uh, Priya's like, I did something on time. Henry, or Michael's like trying to scrape the chocolate off his uh, jumper. Sandy's like, that was weird, Michael. Then we get another, out these are the outside shots I was talking about last week. I'll pause it because it's really fun. Two people are running. It's a, a wide shot. Okay, we have... So everybody walking out, they must have like a, they have a lounge outside with one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, two tables, like coffee table size. This is outside rattan furniture. There's five chairs and two, uh, sofa love seats uh, for them to chill at during breaks or whatever. And it's green grass, uh, hills in the background, you know, beautiful, uh, we also have David, no, Michael, Michael and Alice, I believe, are running with joy, arm in arm. And then everybody else is walking. And actually, it's like Steph has her hands behind her back. Michael and um, Henry have their hands behind the back. Then Priya and Rosie look like they have their hands at their side. I don't know if they're taking their jumpers off or if that's how they told them to walk. So that looks the best. Uh, Okay, now everybody's hands are loose except for Steph's, and then it cuts to flowers in the tent. Then we go back into the tent, and now it's time to face the judgment of Paul and Peru. And David's up first. Uh, spice meringue surprise. Peru thinks it looks lovely, and they cut it. Nice interior, Paul says. Uh, okay, this is let's, let's get the taste of this. Uh, clove, star, anise, and cinnamon if you get one bite. Prue likes it. She says, mmm. But spice, the clove is a bit dominant. Uh, it's not as delicious as it looks. Overwhelmed by spice, as Paul says. It's beautiful meringue, though. Heartbreaking. And David laughs. So they say, how could you do this to something so beautiful? Everybody's laughing. He goes, okay, I'll pay her back next time. But, you know, it wasn't a disaster. Priya's up, family favorite. Uh, the color of the blueberry cream is horrible. <laughs> Bruce says, holy cow. Uh, we don't eat a lot of mauve food, and this is a particularly nasty version of mauve. Uh, Paul just laughs, Priya, you know, and he, but he says, yeah, it's not appetizing looking. I didn't know we were uh, evolutionarily designed not to eat mauve food, but too much amaretto. And Paul says the meringue's overbaked. Uh, so then we got rosy layers of lime and raspberry. Okay, we would have liked a more elaborate piping, they say. Looks wonky. Bruce, Bruce said that. Uh, it would like a peppermint meringue. I mean, not that it, you know, you're making stuff on mine. But a little bit of sharpness. Raspberry curds are nice, uh, but the chocolate doesn't go with it too thick. Alice is up next. Hers has a little bit of a... A basket handle. Kind of looks like a centerpiece. Uh, very attractive, Bruce says. Uh, Paul says, you got the colors. Purple. Yeah, if you're going to have cherry flavoring. Your chocolate comes through. Cherry does not. Uh, Should have used, Bruce says something about some other cherry. Uh, Should have used jarred cherry or something. Oh, Morello cherry. Something with more punch. 
Thank you. Uh, David's up next. Uh, this is totally in rubbed in chocolate. It looks neat. Like your sticks. And too much chocolate, though. Oh, David says that too early. And they said, why'd you say something? Don't tell them. Okay, so they dig in. They're taking bites, uh, mouthfuls. Uh, Meringue sweated on the inside and groots, uh So uh, liquid soaked in the meringue softened it up. Dominates the whole thing, Michael. But I have to say, I love the flavors. Uh, Prue says that orange and chocolate. What's better than that? And Sandy says, plus you got a ton of chocolate on you. Steph is next. Eton Mess. Very professional and neat. Lovely looking. Original. Looks like a celebration cake. So they start to dig in. Oh, it looks, it looks yummy. Gorgeous. Steph keeps her head down. Prue bites it. Prue's red uh, frames match her vest. Uh, flavor the nuts. Uh, take some nuts out next time and lighten it up. It would have been nicer to eat. It tastes lovely. Looks lovely. Too many nuts. And uh, she says too many nuts uh, to Michael. He laughs. Henry's towering meringue cake. Uh, Henry laughs before they even get there. But it's slightly messy, a little rugged. Maybe you could have switched around where he had the layers. Uh, maybe invert them. I don't know. Slight rise to the top. Sure. Design-wise, it's wanting. Okay, so they start getting stuff out, start eating it. Rue goes in for a mouthful. I like the nutty meringue. And Paul likes the texture, light. Uh, jam is the savior. Everything flows with it. Jam, it's good. Did you buy the jam? No, I made it. Uh, really? He goes, yeah, no, dude, I made the jam, Paul. And uh, Henry's kind of outraged, uh, I mean, in a friendly way. No, oh, he goes, that went well, the talking heads. Uh, yesterday, no. Today, good. And then Michael says, that did not go good. And Rosie says, I didn't agree with them. Uh, that they didn't go together. Chocolate, raspberries, and cream? That goes together. We see a deer. And Noel says, after disappointing signature, this is going to be one of the most complex technical challenges ever. Uh, so welcome to your technical. Prue set this one up. It's all about detail and precise measurements. Oh, so boy. So what are they going to do? Uh, they're going to skedaddle. Off you pop. Uh, they're going to laminate Paul's recipes. Uh, okay, so two, Prue wants six identical, perfectly layered verines. Uh, verine is the French word for, I don't know. Uh, it's a French word, though. Everybody laughs. Uh, pushed into a fiddly glass, you know, says. And I say, yeah, a layered dessert in a glass. So Verines should consist of a layer of mango compote, creme coconut panna cotta, fresh raspberry jelly topped with a coconut and lime streusel, and a short sable biscuit. Two and a half hours on your market set go. So now everybody's like, uh, it's complex and simple at the same time. Great. Terrific. Uh, has anyone had a Verine? Uh, this is definitely Prue. Uh, Paul would make Angel Delight. Uh, why Varange Prue they do? Well, it's got mango, comp you know, it's got these layers. Uh, so tough. You got to make the biscuit. It's got a snap. Uh, how could this go wrong? Well, you got to chill everything between each layer, get the measurements right. So you get the layers right. And they're eating them. Like, don't eat too, ma too many because we got to uh, finish uh, all the ones the bakers make. Uh, okay, so then you got to make sable dough for the thing. Sable means sand, maybe? Uh, somebody says Alice, maybe? Cut a circle out of the center, then chill. If only we could chill. And uh, David says, I probably have had this before, but it was after, you know, dinner, like... Uh, Got to put glucose in a pan. So they're trying to do their, their, some people are weighing, some people are measuring by eyes. Uh, 
Sandy says, Priya, how are you doing? Uh, and she, Priya says, it's, uh, like, I guess Priya's a bit of a talker. She goes, yeah, it's uh, like I'm in a house full of little, a couple of little kids. Uh, this is my chance to be out with other adults. I'm going to enjoy it. And panic card has got to get made. Uh, so everybody's trying to mix that and cook it, chill it in a water bath. Man, uh, you know how many times I've been told to chill in a water bath? Uh, you don't want to melt the mango compote. They never told me that part. They just said, why don't you chill in a water bath? Uh, and I said, a water bath or a water brath? Uh, did you just call me a water brat? Uh, but Sandy and Noel are uh, joking about making some sort of dessert. Uh, I don't even know what it is. People are baking their biscuits, trying to figure out eight minutes. I don't know. Uh, and uh, Noel also jokes around, pretends he's a lion, a wizard of Oz with oven mitts on. Okay, perfectly even layers. People are doing math uh, to, to, you know, figure it out. Henry, or no, uh, Michael, 20, like Alice uh, and Peru, or what's the stuff? I'm sorry. Henry's doing it by eyeballs. Uh, and maybe I should have weighed this, but uh, Priya's me measuring by eyeballs. Uh, people are putting them in to, to, to chill. Three minutes on the biscuits, raspberry jelly time. Don't want to mess that one up. A half hour left, though. So it goes like you go to the freezer, then you come back. Uh, you got to go carefully. And layer three goes on. Some people on there. David's is on a, what is that called? A, Measuring where uh, Priya does panna cotta, does not seem to be set, so she has to go back in the fridge. Cause, oh, so what, what is a measuring where called? A scale. Thank you. Noel does some jokes behind a piece of uh, an oven shelf. Uh, Strusel. Was there someone named Strusel in um, the Sound of Music, Michael says, oh, no, it's Liesel, uh, Streisel, Liesel, Streisel meet Liesel. My name is for Streisel, my Liesel. Liesel, my Streisel, like that's what you, if you're best friends with, and somebody say it's not, the name's not, oh, Liesel, Streisel, Streisel, my Liesel, Streisel, my Liesel. Uh, I think a loose, 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 that's not in Doctor Who, but or not in Doctor Seuss either. Maybe it's in Doctor Who. All on Z. Play your streusel phone. So everybody's assembling their things, their biscuits. The biscuits got to sit around the, like on the top of the, cover the whole rim of the glass, like the top of the glass. Uh, there's all these decorative elements. This is not, I could never do this at all. Like people say, you probably could. No, I could never do this at all. Trust me. Then everybody has to carry him up carefully. It's time to judge. And uh, Henry's got a red tie on. I don't know why that's a joke. Uh, let me rewind that. Uh, did you realize you wrote a red tie? with? Uh, he has a printed shirt. It's white with red print flowers on there. I didn't know that was a faux pas. Uh, but they're giving him a hard time, or Noel is. Then we get outside shot. Prue and Paul come to judge uh, the Vereens, and they're looking at them. There's even got to be gold leaf on those. If they taste as good as they look, we'll be happy. Uh, so they start with uh, Steph, I think. Uh, tastes good. Oh, no, it's David. Uh, then Steph. Uh, these layers are flatter. Uh, biscuits overbaked, though. They taste okay. Okay, the Varane's delicious. Uh, I'm enjoying it. And then they go to rosy, uneven on the biscuits, delicate, lovely and thin, though. Jelly's not set. A little wavy. Uh, then Michael, these look nice. Could be thicker. Mango's not set, but uh, yeah, okay. Too much streusel. I think that's Priya. Jelly's runny, not set. Uh, biscuits on Henry's aren't sitting nice, slightly thick, uh, no straight lines. Uh, Alice's texture's good, lines are good, lines are excellent, flavor's excellent, streusel's good. Jelly's set quite nicely, smooth, uh, okay, so let's see the rankings. 
Okay, we got uh, the rankings coming up here. Worst to best, they say. And Palm Peru do a little bit of looking. Seventh place is Priya. Tasted delicious, but uh, wasn't set. Too much streusel. Okay, she says, okay. Six spot, uh, Michael. Uneven lines. Uh, Rosie fifth, uh, Henry fourth, Steph third. Second spot is David. Uh, and it just came down to how neat the lines were. Everything else on yours was spot on, David. Which leaves us with number one is Alice. Everybody's clapping, happy for Alice. They looked great. Uh, near as perfect as we got. Uh, so everybody's happy. She goes, That's, that was good. I was surprised, but happy. David says, four times second in the technical, never be first. Uh, Michael's worried. Uh, I feel like dessert week isn't for me. Rhea's uh, saying, oh, man, pressure's on for tomorrow. Everybody goes out. Again, Steph has her, keeps her hands behind her back. Henry has his hands in his apron. We see some lemons outside. Some sheep walk into the tent. Some jackets on. Some people not. Uh, signature is disappointing. Technical, thrilling, brilliant. Uh, I always feel like Steph's around Star Baker level. Alice is doing good, Paul says. Uh, has anyone worn it three times in a row? Yeah, this would be the second time uh, if, if she did. Michael and Priya really have to save themselves. Uh, and they say Priya's got to stay on time. Uh, and Noel said, yeah, that was my school report. Turns up late, never stops talking. All right, so we have everybody trying to take deep breaths. See everybody, especially Priya and Michael. Okay, it's time for the showstopper. The Celatory Bomba dessert. I'm, I'm changing that around, obviously. That's I'm, that one I'm saying on purpose. Molded into a semi-spherical shape, uh, one baked element, two other divert dessert elements, ice cream, bavois, bombe. Uh, spectacular on the outside as it is on the inside. We're saying bombe. Bombe de ba bom bom uh, get your, get on, you know, Mark set, get set bake. A lot of disasters. Henry said practicing or Michael, sorry. Alice says one element and it'll literally all fall apart. Bombay is really a round dessert. Bruce says, uh, luxury. Paul says you can build it in a mold, but you know, when it's time to let it out, uh, you'll have these different layers, different textures. But it's got to set at the same time. If one layer collapses, probability of all of them collapsing is high, according to Paul. Bruce says, I, hope, I want a perfect slice of every single element. And Paul says, yeah, this is a tricky one. We get an outside shot. People are working, mixing. Michael is uh, show-stopping Bomba. Uh, it is his birthday today. So I might go into the judging drunk. Say happy birthday, Michael. Uh, he goes, so, oh. and he's uh, just turned 26. Sandy's like, that's a great age. Tell us about your boom Okay, black forest one, cherry jelly in the middle, chocolate and almond mousse, and chocolate and a cherry Italian meringue and coating. Uh, too much chocolate yesterday. Sounds like a lot of chocolate. So it's going to be ornately direct, de de whatever, decorated, creamy base layer, rich cherry cheesecake. And he used freeze-dried cherries, uh, he said, because uh, like, otherwise it would be a lot of juice. So hopefully the freeze-dried ones will help with the flavor. Paul tastes it but doesn't say anything. He just reaches over without permission to taste it with his hands. And they say, okay. Uh, and Michael says that he must be good at poker because I couldn't tell from his face what he thought. Uh, then we go to another classic dessert that's going to be Moma, uh, Chiramisu, pick me up in Italian, Alice says, because uh, of the coffee. Alice drinks a lot of coffee between class. Uh, Chiramisu Bombe, uh, Genoese sponge, uh, espresso coffee, pistachio parfait. Mascarpone, rum, mousse, uh, 
spiced cream maybe even or spiced rum and uh, she said, oh, yeah, Paul, Noel says, how come you're so relaxed? Maybe I had some of this rum. I don't know. A lot of pressure. Surprised some people, uh, like, uh, like uh, they said, well, what would you drink on a night out? Anything. I don't know if that's like a song or a joke. Man, that's what I would do. But uh, all right, so some people are going to use a sponge lining to hold the layers in place, which I guess was like some sort of permission they gave to make it easier. So Noel wants to talk to Michael about his birthday. He has got one of those birthday noisemaker things. Uh, also, Prius open her sponge will help her hold her place in the competition. It's a fatless sponge. Light and spongy, soaks up flavor well. Creme de cassis, black currant liquor. It was used in chambrod initially, but uh, smelled awful. Hers is a summer fruit bomb. Uh, dark chocolate mousse. A summer fruit bavois. And surrounded with meringue shards. Hand piped. Uh, raspberry. They say, are you worried about time? That's why I chose mousses, because mousses are set quicker, uh, and I practiced, uh, so I made a lot of these, uh, a lot of them in the bin. Cannot happen today, Paul says. So people are, like, making their sponges, uh, putting them in their uh, molds, lining it with, like, a sponge and filling, uh, and Hen <laughs> Sandy's, like, really taking a shine to Henry. So she's giving him a hard time. It's very cute. Steph's making her m chocolate mousse. Uh, she's not lining hers with sponge. Uh, hers is going to be just set. Uh, a mirror bomba. Dark chocolate mousse. Uh, rich coffee bavois. Amaretto soaked jacan base. And a mirror glaze uh, chocolate over the top. If it doesn't set, then uh, say, like, uh, will it be shiny or not if it's a mirror glaze? Hopefully, but i got to put it in the fridge or it'll lose its shine. I say, okay. And uh, she just smiles. Uh, so there's like, a, like silence. Uh, foam sword fight with Sandy and Noel. Halfway through, Henry's like face to face with his bowl. And now it's time's their enemy, right? Uh, people are putting their stuff, they got to keep chilling. Every minute, uh, your bomb's out of the, ch bomb bay's out of the chiller, then you uh, could collapse. Uh, multiple bowls, coffee bavois, stuff's trying to get that to set. It could melt or not hold its form or just be a, a Henry or Michael says that could be a problem. Uh, uh, okay. And then Henry's like uh, doing his in layers with a uh, circle, paper circle separating them. So he's going to freeze all the layers at once, but separately, then demold it. Uh, they say, that's very clever. Uh, he goes, yeah, I hope it works. His is a bonfire bomb. Cinnamon meringue, it sounds delicious. Bramley apple mousse, spiced honey mousse, uh, cinnamon sponge, chantilly, cinnamon chantilly cream. I don't need chantilly lace. Give me some cinnamon chantilly cream. David's like, what is Henry doing? And uh, so, so to keep the layers from seeping into one another, well, then he needs some, he go, David goes, Henry's gone mad. Michael holds Henry's freezer door open for him. Set all his layers at once. David's taking a gamble, which is cool. I think David and Steph are cool because they take he's doing a sorbet that needs to be frozen, jelly and mousse that need to be chilled. So it is risky, but he likes risks. Sharp lemon and shiso leaf sorbet, white chocolate, raspberry mousse, raspberry and rose jelly. And this ro rose, uh, Bulgarian rose water uh, from his partner's sister, I think, uh, or something like uh, Romances in the Air for Rosie. It was parents' anniversary last month. Uh, so it's going to be red on the outside and sunset colors. Uh, 
a ruby bombay, romantic sunset, honey cake, moose, ba- mango, bavois, hibiscus mousse, caramelized salted white chocolate. Forty years at least, a celebratory one, yeah? Hope it's not a puddle. Uh, we get an outside shot, 90 minutes remaining. And people, oh, this is like a cute, cool uh, sequence they left in. So then everybody's waiting for stuff to chill. So it's a, like a, a lads club. They're talking about the setting temperature, gelatin, David, Henry, and Michael. Uh, Sandy goes, wow, I wish I cared. Uh, and uh, with each additional layer, more stress increases, getting harder to set. Michael's got his jelly, but that's set. He gets it in there. Rosie's got some sort of thing she's flopping in that's yellow. Steph's got something in there. I don't know, like, uh, and my, or, uh, what is that? Paul and Prue are watching silently. Perfectly set layers on the outside. It's got to be decorated on, or in the inside, but you got to be decorated on the outside. Uh, so people are starting to make their outsides. Uh, Bria's doing some meringues. Noel says that you, you and time don't get along. Steph's doing nut brittle, but struggling. Uh, how long have we got? One hour. And no one's listening. So Sandy grabs a bullhorn one hour. She goes through with the bullhorn. It's kind of funny. Because uh, everybody's just laughing. Uh, so out of character. She even uses the sound effect thing. did a loot do or whatever. And now everybody's got to get their things out of their bowls. Uh, like, so they have to decide if they have enough time to decorate it, but if it hasn't been set. So this is like a stressful situation. And how long would you give yourself normally? And Noel says to Rosie, a couple of weeks. Uh, and Al says, I think I'll do some grade some papers and have a coffee. Uh, Michael and David play a knots and crosses. Uh, Sandy talks to Steph, uh, cooking for the people you love. Huh? Does that mean I love Paul? Uh, well, it's challenging, uh, challenging family. sometimes David's stretching on a, a stool, uh, 31 minutes. Everything's ready to go. Everybody's just waiting uh, to get ready to pipe. Uh, Rosie thinks she could do it in 10 minutes. There's 30 minutes to go. Henry says, okay, I'm going to start building. Steph's like, okay, I'm going to try to get mine out. Henry points at the camera as he flips his uh, moment of truth, uh, all-in-one setting gamble. He's able to get out of the roll in the the cling wrap. uh, So he's like, that was a miracle. Miracle one. And not everybody's hoping for a miracle. So everybody's like really stressed. Uh, will it turn out? Uh, Alice tries hers. Steph flips hers. Priya flips hers. Henry's trying to separate his layers now, which is a challenge because he can't find the cardboard at first. Uh, Priya gets ready to take hers off. Uh, Henry's looking for his cardboard. Alice is trying to get hers out stuck frozen very frozen she says uh rosie's comes out prius comes out no problem done finished uh alice is still stuck henry's separating his layers he finds one piece of uh the honey mousse comes out uh david's comes out looks good alice is still stuck she keeps trying slowly to work it out uh, Steph can't get hers out. She's stressed. Alice is tapping hers. Some of the cake is stuck. Henry's working his layers together successfully. David's got his assembled. Alice is still tapping her bowl and trying to stay calm. Uh, then uh, Michaels comes out. Thank God. He falls to the floor with joy. Alice is like, holy cow. Steph's trying to work at hers. Hers comes out. Uh, she didn't think it was going to happen. And Noel talks about it. She says she's going to win Star Baker in a row. 
Don't you worry about that to, to David, uh, no saying, and Steph pretends to listen in. He goes, well, I hope Steph wins. Uh, I love to, I love Steph. Uh, so Steph walks away, kind of pleased. 15 minutes, uh, Henry's trying to get his next layers out of his bowl. Alice is like, you got to be kidding me. So Henry, he had reassembled his in his bowl, and now he's going to see if it all sticks together. Steph's trying to get her mirror glaze. Alice is like, I don't know what to do. David's decorating his. Michael's decorating his. And then finally, uh, no, Alice is still stuck. Henry gets his out. Okay. I think it's okay. And uh, then um, Steph measures her chocolate. And Alice is finally comes out, and she's like, okay, it came out. It's okay. And so she's relieved. Uh, Rose, everybody's decorating with their cakes, uh, with meringue or whatever. Mirror glaze, uh, blowtorching, sorbet, should be all solid. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so everybody's, then we get an outside shot, five minutes left, dum da dum dum and Priya's trying to get her uh, shards on without breaking them. Henry needs some help. Uh, David offers to help him turn the turntable as I pipe. Uh, and Steph gets hers in the freezer, wonders if it's going to mirror it. Uh, and yeah, everybody's decorating, piping. How long do we have? Uh, 60 seconds. Blow torching's going on. Stuff's coming in out of the freezer. Stuff's comes out of the freezer. Prius comes out. Alice is putting cinnamon or something on hers. Time's up. Probably cocoa, actually. Or cho- yeah, like something for a coffee flavor. And uh, so they have their bombas. Uh, they say, uh, mine looks like a cabbage. Pour yourself a G&T, Michael, for your birthday. Then they're sitting outside, everybody's saying happy birthday. He's blowing his thing. Uh, Henry, David, and Steph are kind of snuggling. It's cute. And judgment time. Okay. Uh, Steph, can you bring up your showstopper? You need a hand? Probably. She walks hers up uh, slow. It is shining. It is, like, very domey. Miracle Ice works, Bruce says. I shine like the chocolate and uh, stunning. Uh, hope it tastes as good as it looks. Okay, chocolate mousse, coffee, bavois. And I tasted uh, mirror glaze is thin. Holy cow. Chocolate mousse is what a chocolate mousse should be. Melts in your mouth. Uh, bavois is lovely. I could eat it all. And Paul does not say anything for a while. He's just leaning. He starts to laugh. Uh, and uh, he goes, this is one of the best things I've had to eat in a long time. Everybody claps because they're stunned. Steph starts to almost cry. Moose is perfect. Coffee, moose, so light. Uh, I've been doing this. It seems like you've just been doing this for years. So well done. And everybody's happy for Steph. Steph seems like Scoots-esque stressed from compliments. Uh, Rosie's next. They say, geez, it looks celebratory. Shouldn't have blowtorched it. Should have just got with a little pop in red. But inside, it's like another pop in pink and uh, yellow. And they say, wow, it's colorful. Uh, Fruit takes a bite. Uh, it's a little more foo-like than mousse. Uh, it's interesting flavors, uh, but I don't think the mango goes well. A little bit clumsy. Uh, colors remind me of Noel, Paul says. Everybody laughs at that. David's up next. And it's quiet. Bruce says, it's really pretty, uh, elegant, unusual. Paul says, it's beautiful. They pull it out, it's got a lot of layers. Uh, raspberry, rose jelly, pistachio, lemon, seashell, shisho, seashell, whatever, seashells. Lovely layers. Paul takes a bite. It never had shisho, shisho, shiso. Lemony flavor's fantastic. Uh, 
a bit of like a uh, puckery, very sharp, uh, right at the back of your tongue. Your jelly's a little too rubbery, so that's the issue. And then Michael's up. Uh, his, they say, Bruce says, wow. Looks like something off the 1970s sweet trolley. Like the Queen Mum's hat, Bruce says. Uh, let's see what it tastes like. So they put it down. And uh, say, wow, uh, cheesecake's running. Didn't set. Uh, maybe didn't have the mixture right. Bruce takes a bite. Pauses. Does taste like a black forest ghetto. It's got almond. It's got some punch. And done a great job with the flavors. The look is a little bit uh, gaudy. But uh, that's it. Could be worse, he says. He goes, I can go home happy now if I have to go home. Then Alice is next. There's a thing. There's like beautiful, very beautiful layers. Uh, it looks like a tiramisu cake should look like, or tiramisu bombe. Uh, deliberate unevenness of the steps is perfect. Uh, hope the coffee is in there and the tastes. Uh, layer of mocha mousse, maca. Oh, yeah, they say maca mousse. Genoese sponge, uh, pistachio almond parfait. Uh, the layers are held together. That's nice. Take a spoonful. Prue puts in her mouth, uh, beautiful coffee with the sponge, lovely. Pistachio comes through, whole thing's a triumph, uh, well done, just like a tiramisu. So they say, Alice, you can breathe, you're safe, uh, then Priya's up, and, uh, Paul stares at it, uh, looks elegant, nicely laid out colors, uh, and uh, take a bite, and sponge is baked, still light, nice chocolate mousse. Uh, this, but it, it, it's a raspberry's not sweet in the chocolate, so it doesn't hold up against the chocolate. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's tough. Uh, thank you, Priya. So Priya kind of blows her mouth, the air out of her, like you know, when you blow the air out and it makes your bangs move. Emery's next. They study his. This is simple, elegant. It uh, looks like a bit like a snow house or something. Spice honey, brambly apple mousse. They take some bites. Uh, Paul takes another bite. Bruce says, huh, cake's a bit tough. Uh, can't find the apple. All you get is cinnamon. Uh, need something else in there, otherwise it's bland. Uh, stodgy, Bruce says. Kind of disappointing. Like says, dude, you okay? Uh, Henry just sighs, uh, puts his head down. And then we see some flowers. We go to table talk. Okay, Peru, this was your element. I was in heaven. Uh, see the crew outside talking. I mean, the cast. Uh, Peru says, this is a baking competition. But Rosie and Henry had dreadful cakes. Uh, Peru was in trouble. Rosie, Henry, or... Uh, I got Priya, Michael, Rosie, Henry, all in trouble. Uh, and Steph set the bar high, but uh, what are we going to do? Alice is, came in first. Uh, okay. And uh, David did good. His jelly was tough. Paul, or, uh, even um, Paul says, even I can make jelly. Uh, and then they all laugh at that. Uh, Go to the tents. We see everybody looking, gulping, staring, hands in their laps, uh, trying to act cool. I mean, like, not, you know, not cool, cool, but not stressed cool. So, uh, and Sandy gets to do Star Baker at least. Uh, so she announces Steph again. So Steph tears up. Uh, Elle says, You're so good, girl. And they're happy uh, doing it for the fringes. And Noel says, uh, but he has to announce the person going home, tougher and tougher. Seven people left, and now it'll be six. Uh, so, it's, oh boy, everybody's holding hands. Uh, 
Michael's nodding, but it's Priya. And she goes, oh. So uh, they all give her big hugs. Uh, and Priya says, uh, she's quiet for a second. She takes her, takes a moment to like, uh, let it sink in. And she goes, it's been a privilege. Uh, but, uh, you know, I left work a year ago. I was kind of stuck. Uh, and I said, I'm going to do the things I enjoy. And that meant, uh, start with the things you really enjoy. You can't go wrong. And Henry goes, wow. Uh, last hour I was prepared uh, to go home. Uh, I even knew what I was going to nick in the tent, apron, spoon, bowl, whisk, uh, and Michael says, I was on the bottom, uh, giving the bottom a cheeky wink. Uh, and Steph says, I don't know if I can go on doing this. I thought Alice was going to win. So Alice is like, uh, maybe Steph will realize how great she is. She calls her mom. Her mom says, uh, H double hockey sticks again. She goes, mom, you can't say that on TV. And they all laugh. And then the episode comes to a close, uh, so another nice, uh, sleepy episode of uh, Great British Bake Off. Good night, everybody. All right, I want to thank everybody that became a patron recently. I want to thank Deborah, Susan, and David. Thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Amanda, Ellie, and Catherine. Thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Carrie, Jonathan, and Mary. Thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Seth, Joshua, and Haley. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. And good night. Uh, Jason, Sarah, and Andrew. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. And good night. Patrick, George, and Elizabeth. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. And good night. And Liberty, Snob, and Reed. Thank you. Thanks. 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 And good night. Uh, thanks everybody who supports the show directly on Patreon or Apple Podcasts. Uh, or supports the sponsors. That's how we're able to come out free twice a week and a free way to support the show, though, is just spread the word, let other people know about the podcast. It's actually a huge, huge help uh, just telling other people about the show and uh, letting them know about podcasting in general. And we've been able to grow the archives uh, because of uh, sponsors either like this one or because of whatever Scoots is asking for uh, people uh, supporting it. Uh, thanks so much. All right, everybody, Scoots here talking to you in with this month in uh, Sleep With Me Plus, uh, audio news. Uh, we got a referral program going. If you want to sign up for that, you can always do that at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash refer. I'm going to run through all the content we put out um, this month on Sleep With Me Plus. If you're still waiting to transition on Patreon to Sleep With Me Plus, you got most of this stuff, too. And uh, first, I'm going to start with, uh, like, the the podcast, the bonus uh, podcast uh, on Sleep With Me Plus, and I'm going to go in reverse. So this Saturday, uh, Posty's got a new series that comes out on uh, uh, every other Saturday, just about, and it's called Welcome to Scooterville, and he's real, people are really excited about this. Those are Posty Super Deluxe episodes. Everybody that supports the show gets those in the bonus feed, and they're really fun. They're really cool and really creative. Uh, some people like listening to him during the day. Some people fall asleep to him. On last Thursday, TNG First Contact Part 2 came out for Boar Friends and Boar Besties. And uh, so it was coverage, two, two, uh, two-part coverage in January and February. Bonus episode covering the Star Trek The Next Generation movie Contact, uh, First Contact, excuse me. Uh, then Saturday. Uh, oh, wait, no, I'm, I'm scrolling too fast. Sorry. Um, yeah, then Saturday, February 3rd was another Posty Super Deluxe Welcome to Scooterville episode. And, uh, yeah, that was all everything in the bonus content feed. I think we got one more bonus. Set. We got, um, some other stuff coming out. All intro, all night episodes. This is for, uh, Boar Buds and Boar Besties. Uh, it was Deep Value. And, uh, uh, I don't know what the pay Patreon tiers were anymore. Deep value and ultimate value or something. So we had an all intro episode come out February 8th, uh, and big farm in the sky PI, 
all night episodes, uh, the six episodes, six or 13, that was part two, six hours and 18 minutes of big farm in the sky PI. And then, yeah, this week, uh, another all intro episode will come out. Another all intro episode came out on, uh, February, January 26th or 28th. I can't read that. Okay. And then the story only feed and the ad free feed on sleep with me plus you know the the story only episodes and the um ad free full episodes come out on the same day so if you're a story only listener you get those on the same day or if you're like what you know making playlists um so let's see those are two separate podcasts on sleep with me plus um but same content uh just uh the story only versions have no well, obviously no ads, no theme music, no uh, jingle music, and no thank yous at the end and no intros. Just the story-only portion of the episode. Okay, so Sunday, 1239, Dessert Week. That was Great British Bake Off, episode six. Wednesday was Pup Pup Prodigy, our new series, Multiplex, episode one. Uh, February 11th was Wandering Towers, a board game unboxing. There's 1,253 episodes in this feed right now. Um, sorry, I went off topic there. February 7th was uh, Tapestry, which was for Va- v- Valentine's Day in the public feed. And that was um, a TNG, re- like, a, like a repeat of a TNG episode 560. February 4th, Roaring Twenties, Great British Baking You Off to Sleep, uh, Episode 5, that's Season 10, Collection 7, uh, 1235, January 31st, uh, was uh, Notebooks of the Journey into the World of Friends. That was a series review, we'll kind of look at the making of that series. January 28th was uh, Romancing the Stone, Tell the Tape, uh, in anticipation of Argyle. Uh, which you still haven't seen yet. Uh, that was, uh, and then uh, January 24th was Dairy Week, Great British Baking You Off to Sleep, Season 10, Collection 7, Episode 4. And you can also see kind of we stick at the same kind of rhythm uh, for the most part of uh, a kind of random Trending Tuesday style episode that could be anything, the board game unboxing, tell the tape, uh, personal essay. Then um, we do uh, the written series. So we finished up Journey into World of Friends. Now we're starting Multiplex. Then a TV show recap uh, with Great Great British Bake Off. And uh, yeah, what else? Uh, I think that's everything. What I record this week? Great question. This ended up being the week of Bring It On, uh, the cheerleading movie from 2000, by kind of by accident. Well, not even kind of by accident, totally by, like, uh, I did an episode I thought was going to be about Crayola crayons. Ended up kind of I'm trying to imagine if there was a role-playing game based on the film that I'd never seen Bring It On, even though I quote the trailer all the time on this podcast. Then I watched over two episodes, uh, Bring It On, on mute, uh, and like kind of recorded, kind of like a TV recap episode. And, um, those, uh, like uh, with, with some kind of, like, well, I rented the movie. So two out of two, two, one and a half episodes have good quality closed captioning. But then my uh, rental ran out when I like I, I broke up the second episode into two parts. So the final uh, twenty five minutes of the show, the movie, I didn't have the best close captioning. Even though it was mostly action based, it was like the championship. But yeah, I'd never seen. I still never saw it. it's already been brought. And but uh, I'll, you know, I'll look up the trailer later today just to see. And those will come out, I don't know, right now it's in February. I don't know, those come out March or April. And those will probably come out as TV recaps because we're still recovering, honestly, from the strike. And I'm still a little, um, you know, all the Great British Bake Off episodes we recorded before the strike. Uh, and so I'm still easing my way back into figuring out what our future of uh, TV recap style episodes is. So we have some interim content right now. 
as I kind of uh, see what I'm comfortable with uh, and is sustainable for the long term of the podcast. Uh, and so, yeah, we'll go from there. And uh, um, yeah, I think that's it for now. I'm uh, glad you're all here. And uh, if you ever want to support the show directly, trying to put these at the end of the public episodes, um, just as an experiment so you can kind of get a better idea. Still a sleepy voice. But yeah, if you ever want to check out a seven-day trial at Sleep With Me Plus, it is a huge way to support all the work that goes into the show and make sure the podcast stays sustainable so that you can, you can rely on it and a ton of other people can rely on it. Um, and uh, yeah, you can do that at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash plus. Uh, and then let me know what you think uh, or, or tell me so I can say thank you. Uh, thanks so much and good night.